Thank you. So let me start with some context. So as you know, quantum computers will be able to solve hard problems, such as factorization and discrete logarithm. This means that standard public key crypto system will be broken. And as a result, the NIST, uh, the NIST agency in the US, launched a process to standardize uh, one or several post-quantum encryption scheme and signature scheme as well. So roughly 60 proposals were received at the first deadline in uh, winter 2017. And most of them, we can sort them out in three categories, lattice-based, code-based, and multivariate-based. Today, we will focus mainly on the lattice-based. And in turn, each of these proposals comes into flavors, the in, uh, NCPA1 and an NCCA1, which is usually the Fujizaki Okamoto transform of the NCPA1. Now, the thing is, the NCPA variant does not allow for key reuse. That means that for uh, each new message, we must pick a new secret key. But it's also simpler and more efficient. So we think people will try to, to use it, and they won't necessarily pay attention to the technical details, like not reusing the key. And in addition, if the Fujizaki Okamoto transform is badly implemented in the NCCA scheme, then it can leak some uh, information about the underlying NCPA scheme. So the question is, what happens if a key is reused? After how many reuses can we uh, recover the secret key or at least a large part of it? So we noticed that most lattice-based schemes share a similar structure. So we designed an, an abstraction of this structure that we call the MetaPKC framework. So what's it, what is this framework? It's, uh, we work with six additive abelian groups, uh, SA, SB, SSK, ST, SU, SV, and four bilinear mappings uh, that we denote with uh, this cross here between some of these groups. It can be uh, polynomial multiplication or my matrix uh, multiplication, for instance. Now, the public key is a tuple of two values, A and B, with B uh, being A times the secret key plus D, where the secret key and D are picked uh, randomly, but small. We'll see what, uh, what does it mean. The encryption of the plain text, uh, it follows this, uh, this complicated expression here. Uh, it's not so important for us today, but uh, note that the, uh, the plain text is encoded uh, before encryption. And in the decryption process, we receive the, the two ciphertext U and V. And first, we compute V minus U times the secret key, which is actually equals to the encoding of the plain text plus some uh, noise delta. And then we apply the decoding function uh, on, this, uh, on this value. So it follows that the decryption is correct if and only if the, the, the noise delta is small. So small means here that it's, uh, the, the norm of delta is smaller or equal than rho, for rho some uh, threshold, and uh, the, the norm can be a parameter. So now let's uh, consider the model we, we considered for our attacks. So this is a real-life setting where a client wants to uh, communicate securely with a server. So if the client is honest, he can request the, request the public key from the server, and he can generate some uh, key material K. He encrypts the key ma material, uh, which results in two ciphertext U and V. And then he can send U and V to the, to the server that decrypts, and after some steps, uh, maybe they can derive some, uh, some symmetric key, and they can establish a secure channel. Now, if the user is, um, if the client is malicious, instead of sending u and v, he can try to send u and v plus some value x to the server. And after some steps, they will try to communicate. But if the communication attempt is not successful, it means that the decryption on the server side uh, didn't give the, the right result. It didn't give the, uh, it didn't decrypt the key material k. So that's what we call the plain text checking attack. So more formally, the server at decryption will compute a decode of delta plus the value x, x plus the encoding of the, the key material. And this means that if the communication attempt is successful, it means that uh, the, um, the norm of delta plus x is smaller or equal than rho. And otherwise, it means that the norm uh, of delta plus x is bigger than rho. 
So for the adversary, this is the same as having access to some oracle, uh, which returns whether um, the norm of delta plus x is small or equal than rho or not. From there, we can define a learning game where the goal of the adversary is to uh, find this noise delta given uh, the access to the oracle uh, O of x. Now we designed several uh, learning algorithms for different norms, like the Hamming, the Hamming weight, the L infinity norms, the L1 norms, for example, where we assume we work in ZQ uh, to the N or some uh, isomorphic groups. Uh, we can work, for example, with uh, polynomials uh, from a, a polynomial ring. So here is a, a small example where we consider delta in ZQ, rho equals Q over 8. And uh, yeah, delta is in ZQ, but we consider the value between minus Q uh, over 2 and Q over 2. And after some, some computation, we find that if we query uh, O of minus X minus rho and we obtain 1, this is actually uh, equivalent as having delta bigger or equal, uh, greater or equal than X. So by varying this value X, uh, we can design, uh, let's say, a binary search or cut and choose algorithm to find the noise delta in at most uh, log of row oracle queries. Uh, so we designed several uh, algorithms based on the same idea. And for all the norms we considered, all the schemes we considered, we can recover delta in at most uh, O of n log q queries. Now, given the noise delta, how can we recover the secret key? Actually, the, uh, the noise depends on the, the secret key uh, by this expression here, where the only unknowns for, um, for the adversary is the value of the secret key, of course, and uh, the value d. But we know uh, we can replace d uh, by using the second equation here, b equals a times the secret key plus d. So this means that we can recover uh, a system of linear equations in the secret key. So we can learn uh, delta, and if delta is in ZQ to the power NV, it means that we get NV equations uh, in the secret key, and we can repeat this process k times, let's say, until we have n of equations to, to solve for all the, the components of, uh, of the secret key. So then we can solve this, uh, this system here, uh, where we assume that we work in some algebra where we can uh, solve this type of equation, but it's always the case for the crypto systems we considered. So this means that learning the noise delta is sufficient to uh, recover the key in this uh, key or PCA model. Now let's consider some quantum key recovery. So we wanted to, to see how uh, how well the, the schemes res resisted to the power of uh, quantum computation, and more particularly about quantum uh, chosen ciphertext attacks. So obviously, post-quantum crypto systems should resist the power of quantum computers. So usually, we consider this uh, we consider this model here, where the adversary or the parties are quantum, but the communication between the two uh, is classical. But now, what about a fully quantum setting? So in this setting, uh, everything is quantum, including the, uh, the communication. So that means that we can, uh, for example, uh, send uh, some superposition over uh, the channel. So in this case, uh, in a quantum chosen ciphertext attack, instead of uh, querying the ciphertext and getting one uh, corresponding plaintext, we can, we can query uh, a superposition of ciphertext and a second register to get the output. And then in the output, we get the superposition of ciphertext and the corresponding uh, decryption in the second register. So that's pretty much the model we consider. Now, as you know, a classical learning with our samples uh, look, like th look like this, with a tuple of values A and A times uh, some secret plus the noise. And the goal of the problem is to uh, find the secret key given several of these, uh, these samples. But now we can consider a quantum LW superposition where uh, we get a superposition of, uh, of LW samples, for example, for every possible value of A. And it turns out that there is an efficient algorithm 
to uh, recover the, the secret key given uh, such an input, designed by Grillo, Karenidis, and Zestra. Uh, with uh, some, uh, they can recover the secret key with a uh, good probability. But the problem is that in this uh, chosen ciphertext uh, attack model, we get a superposition of, uh, we get this type of, uh, of superposition here. So the challenge is to, um, to convert uh, this uh, quantum state into this quantum LWE superposition uh, given in equation one. So that's pretty much what our attack does. So again, we assume we work with vectors with component in ZQ. If we work with polynomials, we can take the trivial uh, representation of this, uh, this polynomial in, Z in ZQ to the n. So I will go quickly through the attacks. You can find all the details in the paper. So first, we prepare the ciphertext superposition uh, as in the previous slide. And then we call the decryption oracle. So in the third uh, register, we get the corresponding plain text. Then in the fourth register, we compute V minus the encoding of the plain text, and we take some subset of that. Uh, usually, we take only one component. And if we do the computation, it, uh, it is actually equals to uh, the same subset uh, of U times the secret key plus some noise uh, psi. So it looks like a noisy sample. Then we call the decryption oracle again, so we can clear the third register. This step is important to uh, improve the probability of, uh, of measurement uh, at the end of the algorithm. And so we get uh, this, uh, this last uh, quantum state, uh, which is actually like a quantum LWE superposition that we wanted. So then we can apply the GKZ step, which means uh, applying some quantum Fourier transform on the first and the fourth uh, registers. And then we can measure as in all quantum uh, algorithms. And it turns out that we, uh, after measurement, we obtain the coefficients of any new equations of the secret key with probability roughly one over Q uh, for all the proposals we considered, uh, except for New Hope, where the, the probability is one over Q to the, to the square, square. Uh, in another independent and concurrent work, uh, Alajic et al. presented another uh, quantum QRCCA based on the Bernstein uh, Vazirani algorithm. Uh, but they require stronger uh, assumptions. Uh, first, that the quantum oracle uh, computes an addition in the second register. Uh, during the, so it adds the second register with the decryption instead of just XORing. And secondly, the uh, decryption of one element must be of the following form. It's the inner product of a subset of the secret key with a subset of the ciphertext. And then in the decoding phase, we cut ZQ into C uh, intervals. We see some uh, par parameters and we output the corresponding interval. So for example, if the, uh, if the inner product is between Q over C and two Q over C minus one, uh, we output uh, one. So the, uh, these are the strong assumptions. And we adapted this, uh, this attack to the uh, NIST first one submissions fitting into our MetaPKC framework as we did for the other attacks. So I'm just giving the results here. Uh, and for most proposals, uh, the probability to recover the secret key with one quantum oracle query uh, is at least 0 0.4. And we designed a variant of this algorithm for uh, New Hope. And we get uh, even better probability of 0 0.6 to recover the secret key. So we see that uh, the assumption was stronger, but the results are better. So these are the schemes we considered. Uh, Frodo and New Hope are the two that pass to the second uh, round of the NIST uh, process. U is the number of unknowns. Uh, typically, if the secret key is some vectors, it's the number of components in the vector. O is the number of oracle calls we need to obtain E equations with probability P. And T is the expected number of queries needed to recover the secret key. 
So here, here are the, the results for the classical attack. First, we see that there is no uh, result for Lizard and uh, New Hope. Uh, the reason is that they use some decompression function um, at decryption. So it means that the components are multiplied uh, before the decryption. And that mitigates our attack because we lose the fine grain control we had uh, over this value x. Um, but other attacks are still possible, as shown by uh, Bauer et al. and Kin et al. in some uh, recent uh, papers, uh, where they can recover, uh, I think, the, the secret key with good probability uh, with a few thousand of queries. So we see the, with our attack, we can recover uh, the secret key with uh, a few thousand of queries. And the, the, um, the efficiency of the attack depends mainly on the, the value u, so the number of unknowns which uh, kind of makes sense. Now, here are the results for the first quantum attack, our quantum attack. Uh, there is no result for uh, Kindy Elefton. Kindy because it doesn't apparently fit into our uh, MetaPKC framework. And Lepton because it, doesn't, it uses some error correcting code. So uh, intuitively, for some random pair of ciphertext UNV, the probability to get an error at the decoding is extremely high. So in the superposition, we in a lot of the states of the superposition, we will have only error codes and no information about the secret key. Uh, so we lose actually the, the point of quantum computers and the point of uh, uh, quantum superposition. Now the probability of success is proportional to uh, 1 over q, uh, with q often quite large. And that explains the, that the expected total number of queries uh, is quite big, actually, and it's, uh, the results are not much better uh, in this column than in the classical attack. But the uh, intuition, like the interpretation, is a bit different, because here, with two oracle calls, we have a non-negligible probability to recover the secret key, whereas in the classical attack, we always need to do a thousand of queries uh, to recover the key. And as we expected, the age of uh, attack works extremely well for most of the, of the schemes. Um, only for Lizard and uh, Lotus, where we have uh, more than uh, one or two uh, expected queries. Now, as a final remark, I want to say that the total cost, uh, so the last, the column T, is not necessarily representative of the resilience of a scheme. So, for example, if we take the GKZ-based uh, attack against Frodo, we can actually recover uh, a column of the secret key. So the secret key is a matrix. We can recover a column of, the, of it with only an expected number of queries uh, 2 to the 14. And with this column, we can already decrypt part of the ciphertext and maybe uh, recover the entire secret key by other means. So let me conclude. We've seen that learning the noise delta is uh, sufficient to recover the key in this uh, key recovery plain text checking attack model. That only a few thousand queries are needed uh, to do so. We also applied two quantum QRC attack, and we've seen that with one or two uh, quantum oracle calls, we can recover the secret key with a non negligible uh, probability. And finally, uh, some design choices can mitigate the attacks but at the expense of the efficiency. So for example, we can increase the number of unknowns, or we can uh, increase the value Q, or uh, we can maybe use some uh, error correcting codes, as in Lepton, and it mitigates the, the quantum attacks, at least the quantum attacks we consider. So that's all for me. So I have time for questions. So these are a few thousand queries, uh, queries that's like the n log q value that you mentioned, like you need n log q qu queries. So what is n in that? Uh, what is what? What is n? So because you said that you need n log q or oh, a n log q. Uh, if, uh, so n log q, it's actually... Because, I mean, this thousand queries, it comes from n log q, right? Uh, yes. So q. So usually it's uh, nv 
Yeah, it's NV log uh, Q query. So if delta is in uh, ZQ to the power NV, so we do NV uh, log Q queries. So there's no scope. So you said, okay, that one mitigation would be to increase Q. Couldn't you also increase N maybe? I mean, or, or N is something that's like... N is, is NV actually in this slide. Oh, okay, then NV. Well, anyway, but when you do this oracle query, when you do this uh, like queries, do you have like is it this, is there an heuristic to to choose them the values of x or is it they, are they just random or does it depend on the norm because you said it works for any norm and uh, so actually there are different uh, algorithms for different norms, right. um, but of course if we know for example the distribution of delta, we can uh, optimize which value of x we take and the expected number of queries uh, will be uh, uh, smaller. Thanks. Any more questions? So, is it, uh, so you said that this, uh, to recover the secret key, you actually need to solve these equations in some in this in some particular algebras. But you said, I mean, you hinted that for some algebras, this may not be solvable. Is this the case, or does yeah, it I think so. I have no example, <laughs> but for uh, I mean, for polynomials and uh, and uh, matrix uh, multiplication, it 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 works. So I don't have any example actually. No more questions. So let's thank all speakers of this session again.